Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and this week we are looking at two new comedy music duets by people with Tom in their name. It's very weirdly specific. Uh, first, we're looking at Best Friends by Tom Cardi, featuring Gareth Reynolds, and then after that we're looking at, well, This Is Shit, by Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire, featuring another Tom, Tom Carradine. Uh, but before we do all of that, if you could please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs on these videos, and if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon.com slash Insane Ian, where you get to see these videos early, get my music early, all sorts of other fun things like that, get to vote on polls as to figure out what songs I'm going to be reacting to next. Our patrons picked these for this week. Lots of things going on over Patreon. I, I try to update over there at least every week because I do these videos weekly, and you get to see them before they go live on YouTube on Fridays. Uh, but all of that out of the way, let's just dive into these videos. I know nothing about them other than they just both happen to have come out around the same time. They happen to be duets with other guest stars, and that's it. So, I don't even know who the guest stars are, like, personally. I've never heard of them. I don't know who Gareth Reynolds is or Tom Carradine. So... Neat. Here we go. Uh, Tom Cardi video, as typical in the vertical format, because he films them for TikTok. So, pressing the button now. Well, let's make sure the volume is at the right place. Yes. Now we're pressing the volume. Because I pressed... No, we're pressing the button. You know what I'm saying. I'm stumbling over... It's been a while since I did this. I say what's up. I say what's up too. No, it's... okay, we can just <laughs> short nostril exhale got its own uh, caption. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> I don't know why it just struck me funny. Let's roll it back a little. No, I say what's up. I say what's up too. No, it's... okay, we can just do another take, I guess. Yeah, I got somewhere to be in a half hour, so. <laughs> you mean you have somewhere to be in half an hour? I thought we had the whole day blocked out. Well, I did, but then something came up, and now I don't have that time. That's just the reality. Fucking whatever, I'm just gonna upload this video then. I, no, you are not gonna use this video! Don't turn around, just look at the camera. I'll, I'll look wherever I want! I'm a human being, and you do not have permission to use this video! I like how he said you do not have permission to use this video directly to camera. He's wearing a Best Dad Ever shirt. Uh... <laughs> Absolutely genius. <laughs> I, I, it's already chaos, and that sort of thing, really, I love that kind of, Tom Carty's really good at, at musical chaos, and, and it's really coming through in the video. Just the cutting back and forth between the two of them in the dialogue, especially with this closed visual, uh, tell so much between, like, you know, they are clearly just, we're gonna do this now, and we're gonna film it, and we're gonna film it like this, you're gonna be standing in the back, you're gonna be standing in the front, but, like, them having the argument, looking back at each other, and like, no, we're gonna do this video. Chaos. I love it. Just look at the camera. I'll, I'll look wherever I want! I'm a human being, and you do not have permission to use this video. I don't need your permission, champ. It's my microphone, it means it's my sound recording. No, that's not how music legally, music <laughs> rights work, okay? Okay, you're gonna school me on music rights. The guy who famously doesn't know what the other guy's talking about. The Dollop. The Dollop is an American comedy history podcast in which comedian Dave Anthony reads stories from American history to his friend and fellow comedian Gareth Reynolds. Well, that explains who he is now who usually has no knowledge of the topic that will be discussed with the two commenting on and reacting to the stories. So he has a reaction podcast, as opposed to this reaction video that I'm doing now, about comedy stories instead of comedy music. It's, it's, a, re, it's a reaction thing. When one of the people has no idea about what which they are watching, listening to, reading... 
Synergy. This is great. Great work, okay? Okay, you're gonna school me on music rights. The guy who famously doesn't know what the other guy's talking about is gonna teach me something, huh? Oh, fuck off. At least I didn't get famous on TikTok from saying cunt. Okay, then. <laughs> I mean, if you gotta be famous on TikTok for something. I also love how this has not been a song yet, and we are almost a full minute in to a three and a half minute video. Also, it's five minutes into this video, and I've paused four times. I pause a lot, if you didn't know that, because I don't want to miss anything in the songs and talk over that and all that. That's It's just gonna happen. It's gonna happen a lot. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, I have a feeling for three and a half minutes here the whole length of the song, we might not get song at all. This may just be two guys messing around, yelling at each other, or whatever. And I'm weirdly okay with it. Generally, I try to do music, comedy, comedy music things, musical comedy. I forgot words and letters there for a minute. I usually like to do musical comedy videos, um, but uh, sometimes if I don't know that it's actually not comedy or not music, it happens when the recording, and I release it anyway, whoopsie doodle. Um, that might be the case here. But still, it's got music in it, and they were preparing to sing, we'll see if it happens. Nah. I'm sure that will be an amazing freeze frame for people to say I look weird and... There was a lot of musical skill involved in that video, please don't turn around. <laughs> I can look wherever I want, I'm allowed to look anywhere. Yeah, and look at the camera, okay? Let me ask you this, where is this headed? What is this about? It was a good idea originally. Best friends, the two best friends. What's the point of this? It isn't funny. Not everything has to be a fucking joke, Gareth. <laughs> I like how the chorus is pre-recorded and they're just listening to it. <laughs> We're best friends, we were going to do a song about being best friends. I, also, I paused just before the kicker of the joke of the song kicked in. That happens occasionally. Uh, and and the, where the chorus is, where there's actual singing. They may be arguing the whole time, but there is still song happening around them. Which is also a great joke. Uh, just best friends in the song and also in real life, but they're arguing, which ruins the point of the song. Genius. Genius concept. Fucking joke, Gareth. I thought today was gonna go different. Yeah, well, I don't know, dude. It's kind of a weird idea for a song if you think. Oh my god, there's another verse. It's three minutes long. I thought we had the entire day to do this, Gareth. What's going on? Why, why are you looking at me like that? You know, I listen to your podcast a lot, and you don't look like your voice makes you sound like you should look like. <laughs> I get that a lot. I. I'll, I'll admit something to you. I listen to the radio a lot. I'm old. It's something that I do. Uh, and Because, you know, I'm driving around all day with my day job and uh, as a delivery boy, shameless plug for one of my songs. And uh, so I listen to the radio a lot all day. And and I, I li there's a couple stations in town that I listen to. And when I have found out what the DJs look like versus what I knew thought they looked like listening to their voice on the radio is a huge difference. Uh, some of these guys uh, are, are uh, what's, what's the nice way of saying it, uh, freaks of nature. Uh, not expecting them to look the way that they look based on how they sound. So I get it. I get it. I also understand that sometimes this is not a great thing to look at. I've been told I have a face for radio. I understand all of that. Uh, so that line. It's home. It's good stuff. Like that. You know, I listen to your podcast a lot, and you don't look like your voice makes you sound like you should look like. What kind of a thing is that to say to a best friend? Ah, so you do think we could be best friends? I mean, I'm still. Whoa, we need to go back to see the what thing that is said. That to say to a best friend. Ah, so you do think we could be best friends? I... Best friends. Uh, asterisk. F off. The whole point is the song is one take. Sometimes I don't say shit good. I reckon you say dumb stuff every day, except you don't upload it to the internet for everybody to critique you bloody troll. No wonder you don't have any friends. <laughs> that happens. Sometimes when I'm recording something for, like, the fump or whatever, and I have a deadline I'm trying to meet in a song, I don't 
get as many takes as I'd like to perfect it, and sometimes the song has me tripping over my tongue occasionally, or when I'm doing a reaction, which is a first impression reaction, which is in the moment, and I stumble over my own tongue, and I'm recording at the time, I'm not going to go back and redo that bit. It's all stream of consciousness stuff. I know how that sounds. I fumble on words all the time. There are people who make Ian Out of Context videos about that stuff. Sometimes, occasionally, or they've told me they will. Whatever. It's all fine. I mean, I'm still open to the possibility of being best friends. Sure. I'm not fuck you, cunt. <laughs> Okay, you know what? <laughs> With the Smash Brothers noise. <laughs> Possibility of being best friends? Sure. I'm not fuck you, cunt. Okay, you know what? I I'm ordering a car. You're not going to be able to get reception because of all the lead. The lead? Yeah, there's lead on the walls, there's lead on the ceiling. My <laughs> Little periodic symbol for lead superimposed on stuff. Nail polish, that's lead too. No, lead is terrible. Oh, here he comes to tell me how I'm a bad friend, music rights, and how lead's cancerous. Well, I just didn't know that I was in a lead jail. Did you stop yelling at me? That microphone is very expensive. Uh, okay. I, I want to see how expensive this microphone is. That's the problem with, with too much text on the screen in a comedy song is you're going to end up pausing the video a lot to, to read all of that crap. Uh, I have no, like overall issue with it, but like, if you're listening to it to try to enjoy the song, it kind of breaks you out of that. That was a problem I had with uh, Tom's uh, video that was a, a cover of Carol Brown from uh, Flight of the Concords. There was a lot of text, like hidden jokes and text on that screen, and that, that kind of detracted a little bit. Um, Weird Al's video for uh, whatever you like, there are so many visual gags and gags of, of words on the screen that aren't the lyrics uh, that, like, if you really want to, like, pour over that video, it's a lot of pausing just to see every little tiny gag in that video. So, it can be a good thing in that, yes, you're packing in more jokes per capita per second in the video element of it, but you also want the video to elevate the jokes that are in the song lyrics rather than detracting from them. And sometimes having to stop the video to see what it's written on the screen kind of does detract from the video a little bit because you're not enjoying it as one long piece. It's a weird thing to say in a video where I'm pausing a video to, cri to not critique, but react to it. Kind of critique. Uh, whatever. I, I, oh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, kind of to talk about the video. Uh, but yes, I understand the irony in my statement. I'm self-aware. Sort of. I didn't know that I was in a lead jail. Did you stop yelling at me? That microphone is very... Sennheiser MD421. Retail price, $521. But I stole this one from Guy Sebastian's studio once I knew he definitely didn't own a katana. I don't know who Guy Sebastian is, but it's a very Pulp Fiction kind of story almost happening there, so... Cool. Very expensive. Uh, okay, how about this? If I break your microphone, I'll pay for it. I'll give you money right now. You Americans always try to break shit and then just spend money on it, huh? But, well, it's gone pretty well until recently, Tom. I think I'd like you to leave, Gareth. Well, I'd like to leave, too. And the good news is I just got a car. And by the way, this whole studio smells like feet. Damn it, it canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shave the mustache, Tom. Don't shave the mustache. You may look like the porn star version of Ned Flanders. I'm kidding. That's me when I have a mustache. Just a mustache. Ned Flanders action going on here. Uh, no, but for you, Tom Cardi, the mustache works. It's awesome. It's a, it's a signature. It's a defining trait sometimes. For a long time, uh, a lot of my promo stuff just had the... I only had the chin stuff. I only had just the goatee. The little chin pubes. I had nothing of the beard. I didn't, as many people say, resemble Seth Rogen. Uh, so I just had just had the, the goatee going. And then I had the whole Van Dyke, where nothing on the sides was there, but just, just the, the Van Dyke mustache and goatee combo. And I put that on a lot of my 
artwork for a lot of my things. And now I have a full beard, and a lot of those things are now outdated. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The mustache, though, mustache by itself, for Tom Cardi, absolutely works. If you agree with me, tell me in the comments. If you don't agree with me and think I'm weird, I mean, you'll probably tell me that anyway, but, you know, be nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, that picture threw me off there for a second. That is an amazing picture of Ty. <laughs> Just look at deer in the headlights. And Gareth's picture is almost like a publicity photo that he just cut, or even just like some sort of candid thing. But Best Friends on Two Horses, those drawings, why are their hands in the air? Why, why is that neat? <laughs> it's so good. All right, I gotta go back because I've been talking a lot. For my advice, shave the mustache. Creepy. Horses would also be best friends. <laughs> I had very high expectations for this. What the hell is this? You what? I recorded a rap, okay? Being funny and hip in a cool best friend relationship. Tom, I would absolutely happily do a comedy rap break in one of your songs. Just saying. It's what I do. Do me a favor. What? Just don't listen to this next bit. So I'm gonna try to a Garrett on a butt crack. Now it's time for Garrett to get one back. Tattoo on your butt crack? My mind hurts at the logistics. But, uh, that's goddamn hilarious. Uh, don't listen to this part. You gotta. It's perfect. No. no, that's not. Look, dude, it's it's fine. It's all right. It's fine. Really, I feel kind of embarrassed by this in hindsight. Well, it's been a little awkward, but next time we can hang out and you know we'll do a song. Oh, really? we'll, yeah, you could prepare something and I really like that. Yeah, something. You know. I got you. I'm not sure what you're celebrating right now. I got you is what is happening. And you just fuck you. Oh. <laughs> All of that was so much. Like, the the music breaking down to the point where, like, oh no, now this is the part where we're gonna... No, it's okay. Everything you did is fine. It's not embarrassing. But the music being the, the breakdown of that, and then suddenly, key change, and Tom's whole mood flips. I fooled you about this. And then this part... I'm pretty sure this part is being sung. Gareth found a way out of the lead bunker. I... Wow. I... 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 Right? John Hughes movie. John Holmes movie would be very different. Uh, it's like the end of a John Hughes movie where it gives a little recap of what happened to the characters after the film. So, yeah. Uh, Gareth found a way out of the lead bunker and went on to live a happy and long life, fathering three beautiful children and adopting nine more. Really like kids, I guess. Succumbing to several pre-existing medical conditions, Tom lived the final six hours of his life editing this video before experiencing a very immediate and painful hour. Nice. That was absolutely amazing. It's no better way to end that three and a half minute argument song where the only singing is the chorus that was pre-recorded that they're listening to while they're having their argument. This whole spontaneous, freeform thing that's happening in that. Genius. Genius stuff. Bravo. Next, we are looking at, well, this is shit, by Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire, uh, featuring Tom Carradine. Don't know what this one's about either, but, uh, you know, 
there's obviously going to be ukulele and apparently piano. Thomas Benjamin Wilde uses a lot of the ukulele. Uh, no More Fs to Give is a fantastic song. Uh, and uh, we've reacted to one of his other things on here before. So let's dive into this. And a one, two, a one, two, three, four. That looks more like a banjo than a ukulele, so I was wrong. Something stuck in my teeth. Popcorn. This is just like a facial hair bonanza, by the way. Thomas has got the, the great big bushy beard! I have to say that, like they say it in Hot Fuzz every single time I say something like that. It's just a thing that's inherently in me. And Tom Carradine has just mustache going out of the face, further away from the cheekbones, just straight out. And that's neat looking. Well, this got heavy. <laughs> uh, a little hard to hear Thomas in this one. A uh, little, little bit of a distance between the, the mic and, and him. Um, that said, glad I have captions on for this. Uh, so I can, I can get a better understanding of the lyrics. Uh, it's a little dark in the, uh, in the opening. There's nothing that can be done. I have a feeling I know where this is going, given the t song title, kind of much along the lines of No More Fs to Give, but we'll see. That's a thing that I, I personally sometimes have a trouble with in a lot of comedy music, is that sometimes the song title gives away the joke, and if you know the title of the song, when listening to it, you may have the joke spoiled for you already. Uh, my biggest pet peeve of that is with the song She Never Told Me She Was a Mime by Weird Al. The j j entire premise of the j song and the main joke of the song is in that title. She never told me she was a mime. Of course she didn't tell you. She's a mime. Mimes don't talk. So you already know it's about a mime and the mime's not telling you anything because they're a mime. So the whole idea, if you're just listening to that song in the album, not knowing the song title, maybe it, it comes across as a little funny, but if you read that title, joke is ruined. Personally, I would have just called that song, She Never Told Me. Just end it there. Uh, I have a song about... Well, I won't tell you what the song is about, because maybe you haven't heard it, and I won't, don't want to spoil it. But there's a song called You Might Be by me. Uh, I, I have a song written called You Might Be, and it's about a, a guy having problems with his girlfriend. He's singing at her. Uh, and, uh, you know, this way I don't ruin what the surprise is, what the twist of the song is, in the title. Now, with things like Tom Carty, a lot of his stuff is on TikTok. You don't see the title of the song there, but if you're watching it on YouTube and you're subscribed to them, the title comes up. So, it's a little different in in that way because a lot of people are experiencing them on TikTok and Thomas Benjamin Wilde does stuff on TikTok as well so maybe it, it plays a little easier there but when you're experiencing it just going through random videos as they s repeat through in your feed and TikTok you're not getting a title so things might not be spoiled joke wise that way I'm coming around to, to sometimes thinking maybe I talk too much Shut Up Ian is not just a song I have. It's it's a way of life, and I need to remember that sometimes. That said, this is just me speaking as an experience from a comedy musician perspective. Hope you enjoy that. Peg and roll. Unrealistic expectations 
I'm not looking for some lo for solutions, just someone to admit this is shit. Beautiful. A song for our current day. Absolutely prescient. Uh, fantastic. And also, lovely harmonies happening there. That's, that's, that's the thing I, I, a lot of people... Sometimes older comedy music, and, and sometimes, unfortunately, with my own comedy music, uh, music... Uh, it seems to be secondary for a lot of artists. I try not to have it be with my own stuff, but I know that I'm not a strong singer. Uh, having actually skilled musicians, like Tom Carty, Thomas Wilde, uh, being able to perform and sing beautifully in both of those elements uh, elevates the art form. Um, a lot of older comedy music sometimes, uh, the, the music is secondary, you're just mostly trying to tell jokes. Um, but having that, that balance there, where the music is good and the jokes are good. Yay. I had my captions moved. <laughs> Just sliding it right in there. There's something about the verses in this song that remind me of another song, and I can't place it. But it's it's very reminiscent of something else that I've heard. Hopefully I, I, it'll occur to me during this video. If not, sorry for wasting your time on this pause. So let's all sit and just quietly get this. <laughs> That's, uh, this is such a, a, a fun, jaunty little bar song. I'm digging it. This is shit. Well, this is shit. I'm not expecting answers because they're out of your remit. I'm not looking for solutions just for someone to admit that this is shit. This is shit. This is shit. Well, this is shit. Well, this is shit. This is brilliant. No, this is good. I'm not expecting answers because they're out of your remit. I'm not looking for solutions just for someone to admit. And this is shit. This is shit. This is shit. This is delightful. This is shit. This is shit. This is shit. Absolutely great song. Prescient to the times. Uh, yeah. Loved that. That is great. <laughs> done it. That was, that was, bravo lads. Well done. Excellent work. Uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, uh, not too much to say about the video composition itself. A lot of Thomas Benjamin Wilde's uh, work is just a static camera on him playing and performing, which there is merit in that, but it doesn't do much as a visual medium. You can just listen to the song. Um, but it, it, you know, it, it helps expand it by having, you know, you see who's performing. Um, doesn't seem to be interested in doing fancy things or many different cuts or camera angles or what have you for the videos, and that's absolutely fine. You're conveying the song however you best feel conveying the song. Um, 
we try to look at, you know, the music video elements here on this show, but sometimes they're not there, and that's okay. Um, but overall, as a song and as a composition, both of those songs, excellent stuff, great duets for both of those songs. If you happen to enjoy this, please like, share, comment, subscribe. If you want to see these videos early and help out the channel even more, you can uh, buy me a re replacement tongue. That's what happens. Remember when I said I trip over words and then I just keep it in? That's happening. Uh, yeah, you can uh, support me on patreon.com slash insane and to get these videos early, get my music early, all sorts of other cool things. I think that's the end of the video. It all seems good. It's been a half an hour now, so let's say goodnight. Good night, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye. One known as get herself a big brown beaver and she shows it off to all her friends. One day you know that beaver trying to leave her so she came from over cyclone fence. Along came Lou with the old baboons that recognize that smell. It smells like seven layers. That beaver eats Taco Bell.